Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about creating print-on-demand designs using Canva. So in today's video, I'm gonna be going over how to create these designs right here. They are both like heritage-based designs that can be scaled out pretty significantly. So the first one says American grown with proud Mexican roots. It's got obviously the tree with roots with the American flag on the top of the tree and the Mexican flag in the root section. And then I've got another popular design here, which is just the fingerprint with the um, flag overlay. And this one has a Mexican flag as well. Hispanic Heritage Month has ended, but this would also be good year round. And of course you can substitute the flags for literally anything. So there are something like 170 to 180 different countries in the world. Uh, that being said, there's a lot of opportunities for mixing and matching different flags. And so you can make a lot of really cool, um, proud heritage style designs with this. If this is something that you'd like to learn about and learn how to do, please stick around. So as always, we're just gonna go ahead and start with our blank backdrop. It is 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. And today I'm going to be showing you um, another clipping mask design. Um, this one is going to be another popular one. So we've seen it done where you've got um, something like uh, American grown Mexican roots or any combination of any kind of uh, national flags that you want to use. So really easy design. I'll also show you how to do another one. We'll do the fingerprint design too. But let's go ahead and just start with um, finding a tree with roots that we like. And when we do this, we don't necessarily have to have a tree with roots. We can start with just a tree and then add other roots to it or however you wanna do it. You do want it to be pretty uh, thick and solid because we are gonna be putting a clipping mask over it. So if you come up to elements, and you were to just do a search, you could search for trees, trees with roots, and see what comes up. If I put tree with roots, you can see lots of different images come up. It's gonna be easier for this one if you choose graphics. And so you can see here are some different trees with roots that you can use. Because we're using a clipping mask, it does not matter what color it is or combination of colors it is um, because there will be a mask over it. So you can literally pick any one that you want that has the shape that you want. Um, a few things to think about when you're doing this. If I was to pick something like, let me come to the top here as an example, like this first one here, it's gonna have a much bigger tree than the bottom root part. So if you want it to be pretty even, you want something that has equal size um, weight in terms of the tree and the roots. Um, so you can try to find something that's maybe a little bit more symmetrical. Um, and so something like this is symmetrical. This is a little too symmetrical for me. It's also not very solid. So if I do something like this, there's just too much free space and you won't really be able to make out the flag. So you do want something that's gonna be nice and solid um, when we're doing a design like this. So this one's good if I made the roots bigger, which I can definitely do, and that might be the way I decide to go with it. Um, but again, you can scroll down and just see what your options are. Uh, this design has been done quite a bit, so you'll wanna take your own, you know, kind of spin on it and definitely, you know, pick different roots or different trees than what you've seen before. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead. I like the top of this tree quite a bit, but I want maybe some thicker, bigger roots. So maybe I go with these roots here. And so what I can do is put these roots on this tree. And so that's probably the way I'm gonna go. To do that, no problem, I can go ahead and crop this image here and I'll just crop the roots right out of it. So I'm gonna crop it right, yay. There, so I've cropped the roots out. I'm gonna make the part of the tree nice and big. So this is gonna be relatively solid. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stick my roots down here. I'm gonna be blowing these up. Now you might have to play with it a little bit because you want obviously the bottom part to line up. So for example, you don't want, let me zoom in here. I don't want the roots to be offset like that. I don't want it to be way bigger on the roots and then way smaller on the trunk. So obviously you have to try to line up the shape as best you can. Um, you can also use the arrows on your keyboard 
and that's going to be an easy way to kind of move things over to kind of get them to line up. So right now I need to make the roots a little bit bigger if I want it to line up with the trunk. And so I can take that, I'm going to glide it over, and now it actually looks like it lines up pretty well, okay? And it takes up pretty much the whole screen, so I do kind of like the way that that's looking right there. And so I actually think that'll work really well. So it's pretty symmetrical, it's got a big tree park, big roots. I use two different graphics to do this. I can resize it and play with it too, so if I wanted to make it a little smaller or move it up in the page, as long as nothing's getting cut off and it looks like nothing is, we're totally fine. So I might just leave it. And so this is gonna be my frame. So here I'm just gonna go ahead and title this uh, Tree with Roots. And I'm just gonna go ahead and download this with a transparent background. So I've got my frame that I want. And so that's pretty easy. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pick my flags. So I am gonna go ahead and just do the American flag with the Mexican roots because that's probably gonna be the most popular one. So if I go up again to my elements, I can go ahead and do a search for American flag. I can do a search for Mexican flag. Um, and you can use photos, you can use graphics, you can do you know whatever you want. I've already kind of picked the ones that I want. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to go to my recently used and so if I hit see all on my recently used, I can see the ones that I've picked. I kind of thought that this flag looked pretty cool. So what you're gonna wanna do is again, make your flag at whatever size you want and however far down the trunk you want. And then I've got several different Mexican flags. I also wanted sort of a grunge Mexican flag to go with the sort of grunge American flag. So maybe something like that. Again, you're gonna to wanna to line them up, make sure it covers the whole page. This is where using transparency on your photos or your graphics might be a good idea so that you can see the way the flag is gonna line up with the tree underneath. So I'm just gonna put a little transparency so I can see where the flag sits. And I might want it to be something like this. I wanna make sure everything's covered and I wanna make sure I get a good part of the blue and the, the stripes. So that's kind of what I like there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing, just take a look at the Mexican flag here, make sure that one is lined up real good. And so again, I can sort of center it, make sure that I'm getting equal parts of the green and the red, make sure that I'm getting this design here pretty good. I can play with um, moving it up or down too because I can always put it behind the American flag. So if I wanted to move it up, I could, but I don't wanna cut off the bottom of the roots. So, you know, I might just leave it where it was. And so here I think everything looks lined up pretty well. And so this is essentially how it might look. I might not want the American flag to come down a little bit. So actually, here's what I might do. I might bring this down a little bit so I can transect the, uh, the trunk pretty evenly. So maybe something like that. So I'll bring the American flag down. So now the trunk is kind of split more evenly. It might mean I have to make the American flag, yep, a little bit bigger so I don't miss out on any of the top of the tree. So I can do that and center it again the way I want it. And so that looks like it's gonna be a little bit better for me. So once you get that the way you want, you're gonna to wanna to lose the transparency on your flags. So go ahead and make sure your flags are nice and solid because then we're gonna go ahead and just download the flags. And the cool thing about this design is that this can be scaled. What that means is I can leave this American flag up and I can substitute any flag I want for the Mexican flag. So let's say, American grown um, French roots, American grown Canadian roots, American grown Brazil roots, you know, however you want. So you can just keep switching out flags and this can make literally hundreds of designs. I think, I don't know what the exact number is now. I wanna say there's somewhere between 170 and 180 different countries in the world. So you can imagine that this could make a lot of designs if need be. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna put, let's put American, American and Mexican flag. 
and then I'm just going to go ahead and download this. And I don't need a transparent background, so I can just download as is. And I'm going to go ahead and use Photopea for this one too. I do like Photopea quite a bit anytime I want to throw a mask on something. So, so, so Photopea is really good if I'm doing masks, or it's also really good if I want to get kind of that groovy waved look to my text. Those are what I use it for the most. I've done several videos using Photopea in the past. So if you just type Photopea into your browser, you'll pull up this page here. From here, the center button right here where it says open from computer, you can just click on that. It's gonna pull up your downloads. Here, you're just gonna wanna pick your tree with roots and open that. And give it a sec, it will open your, there it is, there's my tree with roots. And now all I have to do is put my flags over the top. So if I come to the left-hand corner where it says file, I go with open and place. Now I can open and place my American flag. I can hit open. And there we go. From here, all I have to do is make a clipping mask. So super easy if I come up to layer at the top, click that, come about halfway down, it'll say clipping mask. I can click on that. And just like that, boom, it's created a clipping mask for me. And now all I have to do is go ahead and download this. So I can go up to file. About halfway down, it's going to say export as, and you're going to want to select PNG, which is at the top. Now this will pull up another box for you. Give it one sec. Here we go. You can change the title up here if you want to. You can change the, the quality depending on how big your image is. You can change the size. You probably just want to leave everything alone unless you want to change the title and just click save. And now all you have to do is hop right back over to your Canva. Now I would go ahead and leave this here as your template because once you have your template made, it's real easy to just change out the bottom flag and just continue the process and, and you can pump out a lot of these real quick. So I'm gonna leave it alone and I'm gonna add another page. And here I'm gonna be going ahead and changing my background color to black because I do like to design on black. And then all I'm gonna do is go ahead, I can drag and drop my design that I just made. And so here it is. Now it is a little bit dark. So there's a few things I can do with this. I can use my photo effects to make it a little bit lighter. I can use my photo effects to put, um, to put an outline around the whole thing. So there's a lot of different ways I could play with this. I also wanna put some text here too. So let's say I make it a little bit smaller. So I can got room for text on the top and on the bottom. Let's say I wanna make it a little bit lighter. You know, the grunge looked cool, but then now it's a little bit dark when I go to put it on a dark shirt. So I can go ahead, go to edit image, go to my brightness. From here, if I wanna make it a little bit brighter, no problem, I can make it as bright as I want. So something like that might look a little bit better. And again, you can play with your saturation too. If I want it to be a little bit more saturated, really make the reds pop, the blue pop. So you can play with that as much as you want, you know, and you can change anything you want. Once I've got, you know, the basic idea, now if I wanted to add some text, no problem. I can hit T on my keyboard, pull up a text box real easy, and maybe I go ahead and put American Grown. Okay. Yeah, and I'll bring it up to the top here, American Grown. Maybe I wanna change the font a little bit. It depends, I mean, you can use any font that you want. Depends how bold you wanna make it, or if you wanted it to be more narrow, you can go back to kind of where you were. Narrow looks fine for me right now. I could also hit bold and then make that text a little bit bolder. I might go ahead and decide that I want it to be in all caps because I don't think that it looks necessarily too good with the caps in the lowercase. So if I click on it and you come up to the top here where it has a little A and a big A, if I click that, it'll make it all uppercase. And so that looks pretty good. And I can make it a little bit bigger this way too. And maybe I wanna space out the letters a little bit. So I can go ahead and click on that. I can go here where it says uh, letter spacing and from here I can go ahead and space out the letters a little bit more if I really want them to fill the page. So something like that might look good. Once I've got it kind of the way I want, if I wanna reuse the font, an easy way to do that would literally just be to click 
and I can go ahead and hit Control D, it's gonna duplicate that. Now I can pull it way down here, and then if I wanna put in different words, I can go ahead and highlight it and type in whatever I want here. So let's go ahead and put Mexican roots. There we go. And so now I've got American grown, Mexican roots. Now this might be trademarked, I haven't checked. Um, it's a really popular saying. If you wanna get away from it being trademarked, you can always just change the words up a little bit or add words in. So I have American grown with Mexican roots, but maybe I wanna say American grown and actually put in with proud Mexican roots and change it up that way. That would be super easy. So to do that, again, I can hit T on my keyboard or I can duplicate this, depends how I wanna do it, but let's just hit T. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put with. And so maybe I wanna put with right here and then hit T again and then I'm gonna put proud. And then maybe I wanna put proud here so that they're kind of lined up like that. Mexican roots. Now I can play with the way this looks too. Let's say I need these letters to be closer together because this is a longer word and it doesn't quite look even, no problem. I can click proud. I can come up to the top where it says letter spacing. I can make these letters a little closer together so that it's a little bit closer in size with that. I've also seen this done where they round kind of the top and the bottom to go around the roots. Um, if you're doing any kind of round design, I did do a video on round designs too, um, but the easiest way would be to put a circle on top of everything and then to make sure that your words line up with that circle. So for example, if I hit C on my keyboard, it's gonna pull up a circle that I can use temporarily. And I can go ahead and make it lighter too so that I can see it real easy. And I can go ahead and make sure it's to the front. So if I right click and I click bring to front, I can make sure it's in front of everything. And then I can kind of make it match the curve of the tree a little bit. So let's say I want it to match the curve of the tree and I want it to come down to the bottom of the roots. So something like that. Now I just wanna make my American grown and my Mexican roots match the curve of the circle and then I can get rid of the circle and know that I've got really good lined up um, curves. So if I wanna click on the text and I go up to effects, here I can go ahead and use the curve effect and then from here I can play with how curved I want it. Right, so I can put it right on top of my circle. Okay, and so we'll see, it's not quite curving perfectly. I think I need it to be a little less. So that's 30, that's 31, 33, 34. I think maybe if I take this, whoops, and I go ahead and move it over using my arrows on my keyboard. I can move it over so that it looks nice and lined up as closely as I can. So something like that would be fine. If I wanna make it bigger, let's say I want it to go more of the curve, I can always you know, stretch it out and play with it this way, or I can play with the spacing between the letters a little bit more. So let's say I wanna stretch it out that way and then play with the curve a little bit more this way. I can do that, I can do it like that too. Again, I might need to play with, whoops. I can use the arrows on my keyboard too to do that. Um, I can play with where it lines up. There it is, perfect. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna do the same thing down here with Mexican roots. I'm gonna hit effects. I'm gonna do the curve. This time I'm gonna do the curve the other direction and try to get it to line up. Now again, I can make this a little bit bigger too so that it looks good. And depending on what you want, you might want the fonts to be the same size. If so, you can just see what size you used up here. This is 267. So I can come down here and if I want that to be 267 too, I can. So if I want 267, I can just type it in. Perfect. And now that I have it the way I want it, bring it up, I can play with the curve again. And this is how we can make sure that everything's got real good quality, is lined up real nice. And so you can sort of 
play with that. You can zoom in as needed. Um, so again, that looks pretty good. I might bring it a little closer to my circle. So that's pretty good there. Now I can take my circle and move it. And so now I have a perfect curved circle, American grown Mexican roots. It says with proud Mexican roots, that's how you can get away from any trademark issues you might find. And so that's a pretty easy design. From here, I could change the color of the font if I wanted it to match any of that, or if I wanted to make it more of an off-white because this isn't quite white on this part of the flag, but it is pretty white here. So anyways, that's a real easy way to go ahead and do this sort of, um, you know, country, a heritage type design. This design specifically would be really good for like uh, Hispanic Heritage Month and you could trade this out with other Hispanic countries. And so that would be really cool too. Another way I've seen it done is with fingerprints. I will show you the fingerprint real quick. It's a lot faster. So if I wanted to do a fingerprint design, again, I could just come up to elements. I could search fingerprint. And I could pick any one of these fingerprints that I like. Again, I want something nice and solid. So something like that might be good. You could pick any one you wanted. You can make it as big as you want. And then just depending on what flag you wanted to use, what country flag you wanted to use, let's say, I'm just gonna use the Mexican flag because I had it here. Um, I could turn it. So let's say I wanted to turn it so that it fit. I could make it this way, I could kind of angle it however I wanted to again. So maybe something like that. I'm gonna check the transparency to make sure I've got the flag sort of lined up the way I want. So maybe I want that a little bit more centered, that a little bit more centered. I definitely wanna make sure I'm getting enough of the green to red ratio. So if I look like I got my flag centered real nice, I can go ahead, do that. And now if I want to, I can just go ahead and put Mexican flag. And I can download, this is page two, so I can download right here. I don't necessarily need a transparent background for this, or sorry, this is page three, I lied. So page three, I can go ahead and download that real quick. Give that a second. And then perfect, so I'm gonna get rid of my flag and now I'm just gonna download my fingerprint too, and I can put fingerprint frame. So again, I can use this fingerprint over and over and over again, the way I would use the tree over and over and over again. This one, I do want a transparent background for my frames. And this one is again, just page three. So I can download that and give that a second. And now, you know, I can hop back over to Photo P and just repeat the process for the clipping mask real quick. So right now I've got my tree on here. That's no problem. I mean, I can always, like I said, right click on the layers over here and then delete them. Now it won't let you delete all of the layers. So now if I try to delete this, it's gonna give me a problem. I must have at least one layer. So I'll just go ahead and put my layers on here first. So I'll hit edit, open in place, and then I can go ahead and put my fingerprint frame. There we go, once I have my fingerprint frame, now I can go ahead and delete the tree background. So I can right click on the tree and hit delete. Now this is over on the right side, it shows you your different layers. So now all I have is my fingerprint frame. And now I can go ahead and just put my flag over the top. So I can hit file, open in place. This time I can put my Mexican flag right over the top. So it's gonna look like that. Now, right now it has the Mexican frame as the bottom layer and the fingerprint as the top. If you wanna switch those, just click on the fingerprint on your right and drag it down and now it's on the bottom. And now make sure you click now on the Mexican flag on the top because that's the layer we wanna work with. And we can go to, oops, layer, give me a sec, and clipping mask. And there's my Mexican flag clipping mask. I can now go to file Right, export as a PNG. Oop, give it a sec. And I can just go ahead and hit save. I'm just gonna leave it as is and hop right back over to my Canva. And now I can just drag and drop what I just created. Probably should have changed the name of it because it still has that tree name to it, but there you go. 
And so here is my fingerprint. And again, you can add text to it now. You can do whatever you want with it. Doesn't matter, but there's my fingerprint. I can angle it too if I want to now, make it look kind of cool on the page. So maybe I just want to do something like that. Again, at this point, if I want to edit the image, I can come here and I can again adjust the brightness, make it a little brighter, a little darker, um, increase the saturation, decrease the saturation. Uh, sometimes if you're doing this, you might have flags where part of the flag is black and in which case you wouldn't be able to see it on a black background. If that's the case, an easy thing to do would be to put a, an outline around the entire thing. So if you did an outline around this, for example, I wouldn't do it with this one, but I'll just show you, for example, if I hit edit image and I do the shadow feature on it and I do the glow, that's going to put a full outline around the whole thing. So now if part of this flag was black and I couldn't see it, if I put a white background, for example, get rid of the blur, get rid of the transparency, I'd leave it really small. So right now it's at a four and I'd probably leave it there and hit apply. And it'll take a second to finalize, but what you'll see even now is that you're getting this little fine white line outline around it. And so that's pretty cool because now even if you had a flag that had some black on it, you'd still be able to see the fingerprint. And so that's how I would go ahead and do a fingerprint image. And again, you can put whatever text on it that you want. Um, so that was the two things I wanted to show you in regards to clipping masks and um, you know, nationality or heritage type designs. And so those are the two most popular I'm seeing right now. You can find your own very creative ways to go ahead and do this. If you have any questions about this, you know, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. I'll try to get back to them as quickly as I can. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. That's it for today's video. If you found this useful and you would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.